you're welcome to introduction to psychology class. This is Covenant University, Department of Psychology. I'm your learning facilitator, Jonathan Odukoya, or just call me Daddy D. Now, the question we're going to explore in this first lecture is what is psychology? Before answering that question, I want you to partake of this activity. Now, I'm sure you can see three images, or maybe more than three images anyway, but you can see. But let's label it the first one to your stream left, image number one, the middle one, image number two, then the third one to your right, image number three. And just take a pen and a pen and paper and write down what you can see. I'll give you just about 30 seconds to do that. Great, I'm sure you're done by now. So in image number one, what can you see? You can see two human faces, right? I can see that too, so conspicuous, right? In the middle image, you can see a glass cup, right? Good. And then the last image, I can see both two human faces, and then I can still see a glass cup. Can you see the same thing? Right, good. Now, the truth is that in all the three images, actually, we have this two, we have the two images there. We have the two images in those pictures, actually. You know, either inter, inter, in, you know, replaced with either white background or dark background. So you can have, you have the cup, and then you have the two emphasis in virtually all the three images. Can you actually see that? If you couldn't see that, no problem at all. It only shows only your level of perception. And the lesson there to pick is this. You see, as human beings, we have different levels of perception. And that actually is the genesis of most human problems, as we're going to see with time, between husband and wife, in workplaces, in communities, in nations. This is the genesis of war at times and conflicts. When we are not seeing it the same way, that is it. So in the field of psychology, what we've just gone through is what we call perceptual test. It's one of the domains of psychology. Now, you need to understand that perception, like I've said before, is the root of virtually all human problems and challenges. And that begins to show you the significance of the study of psychology. When we understand all this, then we have a different perspective and then we begin to understand one another and be more patient with one another. And that is why we undertake the study of psychology. And that is why we need to know what psychology is all about. Again, before answering the question, what is psychology? You need to know the nature of Homo sapiens. Maybe you're not familiar with the word Homo sapiens. It's, it's actually the biological word or zoological name for human beings. So you can just say the nature of mankind or human beings. Now, don't mind that picture that just used to illustrate my caption there. I don't believe in that picture either because, yes, some have this, but it's still about the subject of perception. Some have this perception that human beings originated from chimpers and apes. Do you actually share that same perception? There's nothing to quarrel about. It's a matter of per perception. And so, and that's part of what we're here to resolve, so that, I mean, resolve so that we can actually progress. So what are the basic components of human beings? Because this is very important for us to comprehend and have good understanding of what is psychology. We need to understand the real nature of mankind. Basically, mankind, we are made up of three major parts. We are made up of the body, which we, of course we are very conscious of everybody. We are all familiar with the concept of the body. We can see our body outside because it's physical, it's real, it's tangible. And then next to that is the soul within we are, I mean, which incorporates the mind, and then we have the spirit. Now, that's a challenge, especially with the spirit. The mind, because some see it as the nervous system and the brain, so it's, that one is still making sense to some people. But when it comes to the spirit, because it's not tangible, you can feel it, you can touch it, you can measure it. So, totally in the field of science, it's not reckoned with. But, the, that, the, but the question is, is there a spirit world or spirit realm? It's a big question. We in Covenant University, because this is a 
Christian based university, we believe strongly in spirituality. And that's why we may bold to actually incorporate because it's going to have a lot to do with understanding human behavior. If you do negate or remove that element, there'll be a deficiency in the way you interpret human behavior and you may not be able to fully comprehend why some people are behaving the way they are behaving. And so it's very important you factor that in that every human being is made up of three, these three major components, the spirit, the soul, and the body. Within the soul is the mind, and that actually is the main focus of psychology. We studied the mind, the working mechanism of the mind, and now that translates into behavior. We try to use that to understand human behavior. And then we'll be discussing more about the nature of the mind very soon as we proceed in this explanation. Now you, it's very important you understand that the biologists and the medical people focus more on studying the body. The pastors, imams and co, they focus more on studying the spirit. Whereas the psychologists focus more on studying the mind. That small portion or component of the soul. Not everything. The philosophers and astrologers, of course, they go more into the soulish realm. But psychologists, actually, we don't go into that particular realm, including, you know, we just focus on the mind, the tangible mind, which actually is translated into the nervous system, as it were, in the, in the field of psychology. That's what psychology actually focuses on. So we study the mind and then how the mind work together to determine behavior. That's what it's all about. And so another background we need to understand before we go into what is psychology is to have a good understanding of human behavior. Actually, what translates to human behavior? This simple model explains virtually all human behaviors. And that is why I love it so much. I just got this by inspiration. This particular model is not something I got from, I mean, from actually any test or material. It's just a simple um, model that I got inspired with. And we can actually critique it together and look at it together, that whether it is, um, it's, um, I mean, it's reliable or not. And so we have these three major domains, the stimulus, mental process, mental processing, and then the response. The response is actually what we call behavior, outward behavior we express outwardly. Uh -huh, that's the response. And so stimulus, let me just give you a simple illustration to show quickly what I mean by to explain this model. Now, the, my voice that is coming to you now as we are perceiving it actually is a stimulus. And so it tra it, it, the, the voice now moves through, I mean, it changes, of course, into sound waves and then travels through the air and then enters into your ear and then your eardrum amplifies it and then converts it into electrical stimulus and it enters into your nervous system and then travels to your brain. And then your brain now begins to process what I'm saying to make meaning out of what I'm saying and then elicit a kind of response. You know, like the time I asked you to write down something, your drawing or writing down something on that paper is a response, which your, being, your brain was able to perceive and process or make meaning from what I was saying, and then you responded. That's simply, virtually all human behaviors can be explained with this model. When you see people fighting, there must be a stimulus responsible for it, and then there is a way their mind processes that information to elicit that response of fighting, and on and on you can go on. I see this as a very powerful one that we can utilize to explain a lot of human behavior. So the question now is, what is psychology? Now, I want to begin by actually taking root from a very professional definition from experienced uh, society called the British Psychological Society. And I love that definition because it's so simple and straightforward and it's very good for beginners. And so, According to BPS, that is the British Psychological Society, they posited that psychology is the scientific study of human mind and behavior, how we think, feel, act, and interact individually and in group. That is actually the way psychologists explain. Of course, that last part, interacting individually and in group, is almost dovetailing to the area of sociology. But you see, you can separate psychology from sociology. And of course, wherever there's human being, there's also psychology. And wherever there's Human beings also, there's also sociology. And so they're actually, uh, you can call them brothers and sisters or twin, I mean, so to speak, um, they work together. And so I've not, but I still, after taking time to meditate and reflect on this particular definition, I still discover that there are some missing elements. You can see the emphasis on human mind. So given the impression that psychology is all about human beings, mm, 
I disagree a little bit with that. And then there's also another component missing. So, and that's why I came up with this abridged definition. You know? So, you can reflect together and see whether you go with this or you still prefer to go with the British um, Psychological Society definition. So, I perceive that psychology, and I want to posit that psychology is a scientific study of an organism instead of human being, organism's mental processing of stimuli, and the attending behavior within the context of the environment. And that environment is not only external, it's both internal and external. And so this is what we're going to be exploring in the next um, presentation. There are some key words or expressions or phrases we need to take note of, which we have to take time to explain. For beginners, you may not quickly understand that. For instance, what is scientific study? Psychology is a science. You need to understand that basically. It's a science, it's a, science. It's a social science. And so we need to understand the concept of scientific study. So that when you explore, you now know what is psychology and what is philosophy, what is, you know, you know the difference between when you are beginning to explore the various theories. Then the focus of psychology is not only on human being plays. We also study lower animals, including up to the unicellular organism like amoeba. Because you'll be surprised, amoeba has, in quote, a mind because it thinks when you shine light on amoeba, it withdraws. It responds to stimuli. That is a kind, I mean, that is to sh a kind of operation of the mind in code. And we need to have understanding of that still unicellular animal can respond to stimuli like that. What actually genesis of that? Because it will help us to understand the human behavior better. So we study lower animals to understand better why human beings. In fact, there are so many things you can study with human beings that use lower animals like rat and coat to understand so that we now extrapolate that information to now have better understanding of human beings are behaving. That's why we use, I prefer, I'm more comfortable with using the word organism instead of seeing human mind alone. And then we're going to be exploring the concept of mental processing and then the concept of stimuli which we have started explaining a little bit, but we need to go deeper. And then the concept of um, attending behavior, actually, which actually translates for responses, and then the environment. So as we explore all this, we're going to have a richer and deeper understanding of what psychology is all about. And with that understanding, you're going to build a sure foundation to begin to go further and deeper and become gradually a professional in the field of psychology. Listen, it's not what you know that matters, but what to do with what you know. I see you rising high. See you at the next presentation.